Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this fly tying tutorial we're going to tie a variant of Gary LaFontaine's Sparkle Emerger. Stay tuned. I want to give you a, a brief overview of the finished Sparkle Emerger variant. This is a really neat looking fly and it's got a lot of stuff going on. We have an Antron Zelon loop with also kind of a capsule over the body to form almost a cocoon. We have a really neat material we're using for the body. It's called Uniflex and I'll be showing you that in a little bit. We have some CDC to represent those legs and we have a really neat piece of hen body patch. It's basically just some, some hen fibers for our wing and a little bit of tan dubbing for our head. And what this pattern is going to imitate is that pupa as it's starting its transition towards the, uh, the caddis fly adult. It's a really neat fly. There's lots of stuff going on, but more importantly, don't just look at it right now. You want to see this fly when it's wet because it looks absolutely incredible. If you check out my Instagram, which is Trout and Feather, and you look back maybe sometime to around the end of 2016, early 2017, you'll see a picture of a, a fly that's just soaked and it's this fly wet. Whenever you see that, you'll see exactly why the fish like it so much. So without any further ado, let's get a clean Hana hook in my vise and start tying this, again, this Sparkle Emerger variant. Let's start tying the Sparkle Emerger variant. In my Stonfo Transformer vise, I have a hook from Honic Competition. It's their H333BL. This has got a really great look to it and they call it their Czech Nymphing Hook. It's a barbless and I'll be tying it in a size 14. The thread I'm going to be using is a unithread. It's 6 aught, and the color is camel. I'm going to start my thread at about the halfway point back this hook. After I get rid of my tag end, I'm going to bring the thread back to about one wrap beyond where the bar would be. And it's at that point where we're going to tie in our trailing shuck. Now by trailing shuck, we're not going to really leave a super long shuck. In, in fact, we're going to kind of make this into almost a, a loop. So what I'm going to do is just grab one of my favorite Antron or Zelon type materials. The color is going to be a camel. The specific brand is really up to you. I'm just going to grab a small clump of this stuff. I'm going to trim it and I'm probably leaving it a little longer just for the sake of this video. But once I have it trimmed, I'm just going to bend it and make it into that little loop. I'm going to kind of help it into that loop by just pinching down. And I want to tie it in so there's just a few of those pieces extending back around three millimeters. I'm going to lock it in with about three wraps. Now if there's anything that's a little too long, I'm simply going to grab my scissors and just trim. I could pull them out of there if I want, but it's okay. I really want that water to get captured by this material. Now once I have it locked in place, I'm actually going to just pull these butt fi fibers back Place one wrap there, advance it a little bit, and now we're going to add our body material. This body material is also by Uni, and it's called Flex. This stuff is just really cool. The color I'm using is camel, and it's almost like a, a rubber in a sense, or a latex, and it's just very flexible, which is nice because you can build it up really easily, or if you want to make it a little more slender, you can just really add some more pressure to it. I already have a little piece cut. I'm just going to let this piece go a little bit past the halfway point on the hook. Just going to lock it in place there. And I want to wrap back the whole way just so I know that really that tie-in point is the same location of my Zelon fibers. And now I'm just going to simply advance this forward. I'm going to wrap. And if whenever you moved your uh, Zelon fibers back. If any of them got caught in this and they're peeking through, that's okay. That's really not a bad thing. Once I get it there, lock it in place, and that's it. Now, next, just a little bit different from the original uh, Sparkle Emerger created by Gary LaFontaine. There's a really a lot of Antron that's used in that one. And in, in mine, I really don't want to use that much. So if you notice right away, it's a sparse amount. As I move it with my fingers, some pieces may even fall out and that's okay. What I'm going to do to kind of get all this stuff around, and, because we're going to really be imitating that pupa, I don't need it the whole way around. I don't have to 
completely encapsulate it because this is going to trap enough water just with these amount, this amount of fibers right here. So what I'm going to do is just advance it forward and then use my left, my left um, pointer and thumb and just kind of advance it around the hook, hold it there, and then lock those fibers in place. Now before I do anything else, if you look, they're really tight. I'm just going to advance my thread a little bit and bring my thread a little closer to the hook and just lift up on it just so I can loosen the tension on the thread. And then I've just created a little bit more of a shell in there. So whenever this goes travels through the water, it's almost going to make that appearance like a cocoon and you can just see the body inside of it. So once I've done that and I, I feel like I have a, a pretty good look on this, I'm just going to take these fibers, bring them back, lock them in place a couple times, trim them. If there's any more just peeking out, just get rid of those. And then now this is kind of a critical part, I'm going to immediately place a half hitch. I'm going to explain why next. Now we're going to get to some of the more complicated parts of this fly. Now before I go any further, I do want to let you know that there are some other ways that you can attempt the following procedures, but in my videos I definitely like to push my viewers, so I'm going to show you more intermediate to advanced fly tying techniques in this one, though remember there are lots of other ways to really go about this. The first thing that I'm going to show you is how to use uh, a Stonfo hair clip to cut some CDC. So let me show you the Stonfo hair clip. This is what it looks like. Similar to a bulldog clip. It's made of plastic. It's got a spring inside of it. What I'm going to do is just grab a piece of CDC with really long fibers. I'm just going to stroke those fibers out on one side. I'm going to capture them inside this clip. Now I'm going to capture them, but I'm going to leave around maybe a quarter of an inch from the stem to the clip. Then I'm going to cut straight up that stem. So now it looks like this. And what we're going to be doing is placing these fibers inside of our thread. So let me just set that down for, for a moment. I guess I'll keep it close to me. And then next, I'm going to grab this uh, Stonfo thread splitter. This is a really neat tool, and it's, it's used for simply splitting thread to insert dubbing, to insert CDC, basically to insert a lot of different materials that you can then spin once they're inside your thread. Now, in a lot of my videos, I love to use the Stonfo dubbing loop tool. It's easily one of my favorite products that they make. Though this one is really turning into a neat one too, so I'll show you how it works. If you look at it from this angle, there's a little groove, and you'll place your thread right inside that groove. Then whenever you push down on it, a really fine needle will pop up and it will split that thread. Now the one thing I do have to mention is that not all threads are created equal and not all of them are really able to even be split. For instance, you'll notice that I'm using Uni 6 aught today and 6 aught is, is typically one size larger than I would typically tie for this pattern. However, with that 6 aught thread, I'm able to split the thread. Now you're not really supposed to be able to split Uni 6 aught, but you are able to because of this tool. It really makes it possible. There's some other Uni threads out there that um, are, are really intended to be split, but this tool is really able to kind of help you out because it just really introduces such a fine point. So if you do purchase this tool, um, play around with it, see which threads it works on. Now there are many fly tires out there that will simply just use their bodkin. The one thing that I'll notice about the bodkin is that you really need that thread to be flat to use the bodkin. Whereas in this case, it really does a lot of the work for you. Now the one thing that I notice whenever I'm using Uni 6 aught, what I have to do first is simply put in a half hitch to make sure that there's really no tension in that thread at all. Then I'm going to back it off just a little bit. I'll put it inside my Stonfo thread splitter. And just find the spot, split it, move this the whole way up. And then I want to push it really close to the hook. So I have my thread split right now. And I'm going to simply take this CDC. I'm going to set it in there between those thread pieces. Open the clip and I have the majority of them locked in place. Now for me to spin this, it's really going to be simple. I'm just going to let the bobbin hang off my finger and just spin it in one direction. And when you do this, you're going to eventually feel that thread's going to catch. It's going to pop up over your finger. 
and it's gonna really you'll see all this CD spin, CDC just start taking off and spinning like it's doing right now. Once I see that then I know I have it all captured and I'm simply gonna wrap it forward and just palmer it back and try my best to wrap it on top of itself. What we're doing now is we're really just tying in the legs. So I want them going all over the place. Once I have those CDC legs tied in, now it's really just the final cleanup mode with this pattern. Now we're down to the last two materials that we need for this Sparkle Emerger variant. The next one's gonna be a hen body patch. This is a really neat one that I got off of my buddy, Joel Alsdorf. He runs Alsdorf Genetic. Uh, they sell a lot of really great feathers and uh, deer hair and just uh, incredible marabou. Um, he calls this one a blue partridge hen body patch. Now, if he doesn't have it listed on his website, just give him a call, tell him that I sent you. And uh, what I love about this is that it's just a really nicely marked feather on both the front and the back. And there's a really nice range of sizes. Now you can use these as, for soft hackles if you want, but what I want to do with this fly, I'm going to take a really healthy clump of this feather off one side of the stem, just pinch it all together. And what that's going to represent is that just the beginning of the adult caddis fly wing starting to really just pop out of the pupa. So we don't want to tie this the whole way back like it's in that tent or anything at that moment. We just want to put it about halfway back to really show that this wing is just starting to develop. So I'm just going to put it in place there. Just need a couple wraps to get that. And that's it. And if it pops up like that, that's okay because when, this get, when it gets wet, it's going to lay perfectly. Let's just trim away these butt fibers. I'm going to get them away from that, that eye. We're getting really close there. We have to watch with this six watt thread that we don't build it up too much. Okay, and then finally, just find your favorite, kind of a darker tan, hair's ear dubbing. We're just gonna put a nice little head on the front of this fly. We just need a little touch of it. Just to really cover up everything. And then you can go immediately into your whip finish. And I like using this camel thread because it just gives a little bit more of a, a darker head to this pattern. After you whip finish, that is it. And now I'll give you a quick 360 at the finished fly. So now if we kind of think back to what I showed you previously before tying this, we have a lot of great materials that we've incorporated that are different from the original. Now we still have that Antron Zelon material, but now for our body, instead of a dub body, we're going to go with the Uniflex. For our legs, we're going to put in that, that natural CDC. It just has some great movement to it, and it really is going to do an excellent job of just really moving throughout the water, imitating those caddis fly legs as it's, this pupa is trying to make its emergence. And then instead of using deer hair, which can be a little bit of a, a tougher material to work with, especially for, for newer tires, we're going to jump to a hen body patch because we don't really need that significant wing. We just want that wing that's just a little bit darker than everything else, just to show that fish that something's starting to develop here. So this is my variant to the Sparkle Emerger. I really love the original pattern. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it next after I change the camera angle. Gary LaFontaine just did an outstanding job whenever he created the Sparkle Emerger. It's a fantastic fly that just caught a ton of fish for a ton of fly fishermen over the years. There's no doubt about it. In this video, I shared my variant with you, basically my attempt to pay homage to that original pattern. And the variant is one that I've been turning to more and more on a regular basis. Though I do have to stress, I still tie and fish the original pattern. It's a great one. But I kind of like the notion of using some up-to-date materials, uh, such as that Uniflex. It's something that just changes the original just a little bit, plus it's a little bit easier for some beginners to manipulate. Now, before we talk more about that fly tying or fly fishing, I think we really have to take a step back though and first talk about why this pattern even works. It's considered a caddis emerger and to kind of talk a little bit about some entomology, just a little bit regarding the caddis, let's kind of think about what happens whenever it's shifting from a caddis pupa to the caddis adult. So that pupa is 
in, in this sense where this pupa is coming off the bottom of the water, we'll say in a stream, and as it's making its rise to the surface, inside the pupa, the adult caddis fly is starting to transition. So it's basically turning from that pupa into the adult, and it's all happening inside of that. So there's a lot of stuff going in during that, those moments, I guess. And it's a very vulnerable stage for that caddis fly. Trout know that as well, so they key in on that stage. If you think about some of the materials, they give almost this glistening appearance. And that's something that's a little controversial with this fly, and I'm not even gonna attempt to go down that line of discussion. But anytime I'm tying any type of a caddis emerger, I want just a little bit of a glistening appearance to it. Because there's a lot of people out there that believe that that glistening appearance is just almost a trigger for trout to say, there's a caddis fly, it's emerging and it's vulnerable, let's go after it. So now to kind of bring it a little bit forward, whenever I fish this fly, there's really two main ways that I like to fish it. The first is a dry dropper situation. And basically I'll take something like a deer hair caddis and I'll tie that directly onto my tippet. Then off the bend of that hook, I'll add around 10 inches of tippet and then that's where I'll tie this sparkle emerger variant. So I want that sparkle variant just sitting in that film or maybe a little bit under the film. Don't be afraid to put a tiny split shot in front of it just so you can ensure that that, that variant is just popping below the surface because that's where those fish are gonna be king because they know that's where that pupa should be. It shouldn't be on the surface of the film yet. It should not be there yet because once it hits the film, that's when the adult's gonna come popping out. So this is really intended to represent that adult as it's just starting to peek out. So we want this fly just sitting in that film or a hair underneath it. I also love to fish this fly above nymphs, and, and what I mean by that, I'll have a nymph leader and I'll have a really heavy nymph, maybe a caddis imitation, that I'm drifting near the bottom. And then about two feet up that leader, I'll have a little piece of tippet coming off, and that's where I'll fish this. Because I want to really hit those fish that are a little higher up in the water column. I'll start to transition to this fly whenever I see fish that are flashing underwater, really to give me that signal that they might be now taking emergers. Now let's talk about the fly tying perspective of this pattern because there are so many different ways that you can take this fly. I mean, for instance, if you do a quick Google search for sparkle emerger, you're going to see lots of different patterns out there that really closely imitate the original by Gary LaFontaine. And they're all really great patterns. And I wanted to kind of add my own to that, that mix. Uh, I chose to stay away from deer hair, not because it's not a great material. It is, I use it on so many flies. But I know that deer hair can be a little difficult for beginners to use at first. That's why I wanted to just kind of leave it go on this one and, and really say if you're a beginning to intermediate fly tire, the fly that I just shared with you is going to be a little bit easier to tie than the original, unless that you're comfortable using some type of the deer hair. Now, whenever we go down that path of how else can you vary this fly, Think about your natural caddis that are found in your local waters. What color are they? Because those are some of the colors that you'll want to replicate with your own pattern. By the way, if there's any other ways that you can vary this fly, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments section because me adding the Uniflex is just one take on it. It's a great material, but I guarantee that there's some other materials that you're probably thinking right now you could use, or there's probably some materials that you do use, and I'd love to hear from you down there. But with that said, I'm going to wrap this up and thank you so much for watching this fly tying tutorial. If you'd like to watch more of these, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook account and an Instagram account, and they're both under the Trout and Feather heading. And through those, I share various articles and pictures and all kinds of fun stuff. So it'd be great if you could follow. If you have any questions or comments, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Or as I mentioned before, you can leave them down below in the comment section. Once again, thank you everybody so much for viewing this fly tying tutorial on Gary LaFontaine's Sparkle Emerger variant. Whoa!